In our last episode, we discovered that the tree minders of Oasis were worshipping an ancient mutant named Harold as a god. When we talked with Harold, we discovered that he has been rooted to the ground for over 20 years thanks to his mutation. And then he asked us to kill him. He said he just couldn't bear living in that one spot any longer. He begged us to put him out of his misery. But before we agree to do so, we can head back towards the pavilion to talk with the other tree minders. While doing so, we bump into a conversation between tree father Birch and leaf mother Laurel. And I'm telling you, you've got it all wrong. Why else would he have called for an outsider's assistance? The outsider is here to deliver us from our enemies, to keep this place safely locked away from the wasteland, not to exploit us. How can we preach about peace when all you want to do is keep his gift all to ourselves? That's not what he would want. If we allow the spread of this miracle to continue, we're putting him in jeopardy. I can't allow that. I won't allow it. Once again, my husband, we are at an impasse. I suggest we speak to the outsider. Agreed. Why else would the outsider have been allowed into the grove? Perhaps it's a test. Yes, that must be it. I know why you're here, and despite what my wife thinks, I know you'll do what's best for Oasis. After all, he chose you, and he would never want to put us in harm's way. He has the same response to all three of these options. Can we just dispense with all of the religious crap? His name is Harold. Oh, he's testing you now, just like he tested us. He wants to see if your faith is strong by spinning these incredible stories. Who else but a god could produce all of this? Don't worry, you'll soon see things as I do. Did you know that crazy tree thing wants me to kill it? I've had enough of your blasphemy! I've tolerated it this long because you're an outsider, but no more! If you wish to test me again, you'll find yourself banished from Oasis. You don't scare me, Birch, and neither does that overgrown weed you call a god. That's it! You are no longer welcome in Oasis! Get out! Immediately! If you remain here against my wishes, we'll have no choice but to put you down. With that, we could still complete the quest by killing Harold, but we lock ourselves out of a couple of options and all of the best loot. I thought I was quite clear. Leave, or we will be forced to take action. By insulting the Tree Father, you've insulted us all. You are no longer a guest here. I'd advise you to leave immediately. So instead of insulting him, we can say, Harold makes unusual requests. The Great One does tend to speak in riddles, but if that is his way, then so be it. My talks with him have become quite puzzling of late. I think he's beginning to fear his future. Are you aware that Harold wants to die? Yes, I've been pondering that riddle myself for some time now, and I think I know what he's trying to tell us. The Great One's influence is growing, and soon it will break free of the confines of this secluded veil. We can't allow Oasis to call attention to itself like that. It would be the end of him. Well, killing him should stop his influence from spreading. You misinterpret his words, my friend. He wants you to extinguish that which seeks to make him vulnerable. If the same sap that you drank to purify yourself could be applied to his heart, it should stop the spread. I can promise you no harm would come to him. That's all I ask of you, outsider. Nothing more, nothing less. With that, Birch walks away, but then Laurel takes us aside. I love Birch, but sometimes I think he doesn't see the big picture. The spreading of his influence is not a curse. It's a great miracle. A benefit meant for the entire wasteland. This is a waste of my time. I can understand your frustration. Seeing him in so much pain makes me feel a sense of sadness in my heart, too. The Great One yearns to share his miracles with the whole world. To give the gift of life back to the dead wasteland. Why don't any of you actually listen to Harold? Of course we do. He yearns to share his miracles with the whole world, to give the gift of life back to the dead wasteland. It's upsetting him to no end, 
but Birch can't see the pain it's causing. But now that you're here, I have a feeling the winds are about to change. How can I possibly help? I heard what my husband wanted you to do. What I propose is an alternative. The same person that created the sap also created this liniment. If you can reach his heart, it will assist him in making his influence increase. Instead of centuries, the wasteland will become green in mere decades. Just imagine how glorious that would be. And with that, Laurel walks away. We now have two more options. We could kill Harold as he asks, apply Birch's sap to his heart to stop his growth, or apply Laurel's liniment to accelerate his growth. Let's talk with the others. Branch Tender Cypress at your service. Welcome to our little home. What's your opinion of Tree Father Birch and Leaf Mother Laurel? I wish they wouldn't argue so much. It makes everyone uncomfortable. So how'd you end up here? I was an outsider like yourself. Wandering the world aimlessly, wasting my life trying to seek my fortune. When my eyes beheld the splendor of Oasis, I knew I'd found a holy place. Tree Father Birch allowed me to stay, and I've been here ever since. What did you have to do to become a tree minder? Actually, you already did some of it. I had to do the ceremony and meet with the Great One. Then Tree Father Birch taught me everything I needed to know about Oasis and how it has to remain a secret. That's why I'm so worried. I just think letting this place spread into the wasteland would be an unwise decision. I don't think Leaf Mother Laurel is going to like hearing you say that. Go tell her what you want. My opinion is my own. That's one of the founding ideals of the Tree Minders. And being an outsider, I'd expect you not to judge our laws. Or we can say, what if all of the Tree Minders don't agree with you? That would worry me. Or we can say, I think you're right. Who knows what would happen to this place? Exactly. I was out there once, like you. I wandered the wasteland for many years. All I saw was poverty, famine, sickness, hate, and death everywhere I turned. But this place... This place isn't anything like that. We can't let all that evil inside here. We just can't. Hey, I saw you garden those caves back there. Can I have the key? Sure. Here you go. Good luck to you. All right, I gotta go now. I trust we'll speak again, outsider. All right, we've got the key to the caves. We can destroy his heart at any time. But it looks like Cypress here agrees with Tree Father Birch. Maybe we should do this democratically. See what all of the tree miners think. Heading back towards the pavilion, we can talk with Tree Father Birch again. Father Birch, do you have any information on the caves below that you can share with me? Just like a cancer would infest our bodies, the caves below us are infested with vermin. You'd do well to be cautious down there. We've lost a few tree minders in the past. Oh, great. Vermin. Look, why don't you just travel to Harold's heart on your own? I would if I was able. But he will not allow us entry. His roots bar the door, and we have yet to earn the right to pass. Were you aware that Laurel gave me this liniment? Of course I am. I know everything that goes on in Oasis. Laurel is free to pursue whatever path she chooses. A long time ago, it was agreed that the Tree Father and the Leaf Mother hold equal say. I don't seek to change those customs. I just hope when the time comes, you'll make the right choice. Oh, it's great to know that they respect each other like that. Where did this sap you gave me come from? Bloomseer Poplar has a unique understanding of the innate power that lay dormant in the plants you see around you. She created the sap with the knowledge she brought to us from the wasteland. Where's the entrance to the caves? You'll find the entrance in the southwestern part of Oasis. Ah, the door that Cypress was guarding. Got it. May I ask you about the tree minders? Of course. We're quite open about everything here. How did the tree minders begin? When I first beheld the glory of the Great One, I knew there'd be others who would seek to do him harm. I also knew he would be calling others that he felt were pure of heart to protect him. Right then and there, I created the Tree Minders, the Great One's last line of defense. How do Tree Minders normally handle other outsiders? If the outsider doesn't have his blessing, we simply deny him entry to our home. If they persist on trying to gain entry, 
or display any hostile act that could potentially harm the Great One, we take action. If the outsider were a raider or some other nefarious type, we ensure they don't report our location back to their comrades. Could I become a tree minder? Becoming a disciple of the Great One takes many years of dedication and the will to cast aside your reliance on technological conveniences. However, I feel you've been sent here for a higher purpose and could be more instrumental in our future than a mere tree minder. All of your names are quite strange. What do they mean? The first part of our name represents our role in the tree minders. The youngest are the saplings, still learning what it means to live in oasis. The branch tenders are our guardians and keep our home safe. Our healers and soothsayers are known as bloom seers. Finally, the tree father and the leaf mother are the creators and the upholders of the Great One's laws. If this place has living plants, does that mean the water is safe to drink? I'm afraid the water still bears the mark of man's greed. It's his reminder of what we once were. Perhaps one day, he will see fit to lift this punishment. But I fear we have yet to command his full respect. I have to go. Have no fear, outsider. I know you'll make a wise decision. So as we discovered in our last episode, the water is still irradiated, and yet all of this green life can grow. As we continue, we discover a young girl. Hello, Outsider. It's very nice to see you. So you're the Outsider, huh? You seem nice to me. Hi there, Sapling You. What's your opinion of Tree Father Birch and Leaf Mother Laurel? They're the best parents ever. Do you have any information that could help me in the caves below? My parents told me never to go past the old gate. There are monsters in there. Tell me about your god. Oh, you mean Harold? He's really nice. Sometimes when I get really lonely, I go into the grove and talk to him. Sometimes I even curl up all cozy-like and sleep next to his root after I have a bad dream. I tell him what I'm scared of, and he tells me what he's scared of. It makes me feel better knowing I'm not the only one. Oh, so she's the only one who calls him Harold, okay. What exactly is Harold scared of? Sorry, that's only for secrets between friends. We can pass a speech check to learn the secret, or if we have the child at heart perk, we can say, hey, maybe if you tell me what Harold is scared of, I won't be scared either. Aw, I never knew an outsider could be scared of anything. Harold told me that he's scared of fire. If fire ever got on him, it would burn him and Bob until they were all gone. That's why we keep the fires far away from him. So how'd you end up here? I was born here, silly. Oh, really? Born to Birch and Laurel? I seem a bit old for that. What did you have to do to become a tree minder? Just get born, I guess. <laughs> You're funny. Ah, I see. All right, I'll be going now. May the sap of his wisdom sustain you. So, Harold is scared of fire. Hello, outsider. It's very nice to see you. Yes, what can I do for you on this beautiful day? What's your opinion of Birch and Laurel? I think this place would be lost if it weren't for them. There's no telling what fate may have befallen the Great One if someone like the godless raiders had gotten here first. Tell me about your god. He is the Great One, the Tree Father of Tree Fathers. There is no greater being in the world than he. I've dedicated my life to protecting this place from the outside world, and I will never fail in that duty. Okay. So how'd you end up here? I was brought here by his will, I heard his calling, and I followed. I believe only a few are worthy enough to find this place, and I'm honored to be among them. That's why I dread the day Oasis overgrows its boundaries. Stop being so selfish. You people should share this place with everyone. And watch as he is prodded and picked apart by those who seek to exploit him? I will never allow that. He must remain safe and we will be his guardians. Or we could say yes. It sure would be dangerous letting the Wasteland know where Oasis is located. Exactly. You make me smile, Outsider. It's people like you who give me hope that everyone out there isn't lost. Or we can pass a speech check to say, I don't see that it matters much. Oasis is off the beaten path as it is. I suppose so, but you found it. 
how many others will stumble across Oasis? Will they be friendly? I'm worried, Outsider. I'm truly worried. What did you have to do to become a tree minder? I had to accept the ideals of Tree Father Birch and cast away my dependence on technology. All right, I gotta go. May you remain under the canopy of his protection. So Maple also agrees with Birch. Does anyone agree with Laurel? Let's ask Linden here. It's very nice to meet you, Outsider. I'm Branch Tender Linden. What's your opinion of Birch and Laurel? I've only known them for a very short time, but when I first arrived, they immediately took me in and treated me just like a son. There aren't many people in the world left like that. Any information on the caves below that might help me? Oasis is located near what used to be an old mining town before the bombs fell. When the attack started about 200 years ago, many people took shelter in the natural caves that dotted the area. The old gate that stands at the mouth of Oasis Cave is the last piece of architecture from those days. Oh, I wonder how deep those caves go. Hey, tell me about your god. Well, I'm not so sure the Great One is a god. I mean, I don't believe in that sort of thing. However, I am beginning to realize he's special. Something greater than any of the creatures in the wasteland. Okay, a fairly reasonable approach. So how'd you end up here, Linden? I was found dying in the wastes not far from here by a trader caravan. They knew about this place and brought me to Bloomseer Poplar. She nursed me back to health, and I've stayed ever since. Why'd you stay here after you recovered? I felt I owed these people for bringing me back from the brink. I'm not sure if I could live with these loonies. You have a lot of nerve. We've shown you nothing but hospitality. And then instead of thanks, you choose to hurl insults? I'm all for sharing Oasis with the rest of the Wasteland. But if you're an example of what we face in doing so, perhaps it's a mistake. Or we can pass a speech tech to say, dying? How awful. What happened to you? I was a Brotherhood of Steel outcast. We had a deep patrol out here looking for some tech, and they got jumped by some death claws. They shredded everyone else and left me bleeding to death. If it wasn't for Oasis and Bloomseer Poplar, I'd be dead right now. Honestly, I've never seen anything like this place. It's beautiful. It's a shame only a few people will ever get to see it. What did you have to do to become a tree minder? I sort of fell into it, I guess. I woke up here and I just stayed. After a while, I became one of them. All right, I'll be going now. May your spirit rest in his branches. So Linden agrees with Laurel and wants to share Harold's gift with the people of the Wasteland. Next, we can talk with Bloomseer Poplar. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Bloomseer Poplar, soothsayer and healer of Oasis. It brings me great honor to welcome you. What's your opinion of Tree Father Birch and Leaf Mother Laurel? Lately, things have gotten a bit worse between them. It sometimes takes months for them to agree on things. I know they love each other greatly, but I'm afraid the strain of leadership is tearing them apart. Anything I need to know about the caves below? Be wary of the water in the caves. I fear they still carry the sting of radiation from the bombs. What's causing this place to grow? In what we call the harvest month, the Great One creates seeds among his branches within seed pods. At the end of this time, the pods open and the seeds are carried quite easily upon the wind. It's quite beautiful. Wherever the seeds take purchase, they grow into trees, plants, grass, or all manner of wonderful things. Tell me about your god. He's not my god. He's everyone's god. You, me, everyone. This place isn't meant just for the tree minders. It's for all mankind. You speak heresy. Tree Father Birch should hear about this. Heresy? Not at all. Leaf Mother Laurel's word is just as binding as Tree Father Birch's. I have no obligation to follow one or the other. How dare you speak to a bloom seer like that? I know our laws better than any outsider would. Now be gone. Or we can say, what if there are others that don't share your opinion? You'd think they'd realize that this place won't remain a secret forever. I agree completely. Oh, if only Tree Father Birch saw it as you do. Of everyone, he's been here the longest. You'd think he'd realize that this place won't remain a secret forever. The caravans know about it and you found it. How long before someone comes to take this place by force? No. I say allow this place to grow, and that issue becomes moot. So how did you end up here? My father was a healer like myself. 
He had the most curious books I would read about trees and plants and their medicinal properties. Many years later, I heard a rumor about a place such as this. I spent a decade in search of it. I've been in this wonderful place for over 15 years now. What did you have to do to become a tree minder? I was the third one to arrive here in Oasis. Tree Father Birch was a bit wary at first, but Leaf Mother Laurel convinced him to let me stay. If she hadn't been around, I doubt Birch would have ever let me stay here. After a while, they taught me their ways, and together we developed the ceremony of purification that you undertook. Okay, I'll be going now. May the Great One bless you. Well, this is frustrating. Cypress and Maple agree with Birch. Linden and Poplar agree with Laurel. A little sapling you doesn't appear to have an opinion. She just sees Harold as a buddy. Finally, we can track down Laurel to see if she has anything else to add. You have questions for me, outsider? Have any information on the caves below? If the Great One knows you to be worthy of his grace, he will allow you to pass through to his heart. I have some questions about the task you gave me. Certainly. Please ask them. Why don't you just travel to Harold's heart on your own? The Great One has not yet allowed us entry below ground. We were uncertain as to why until you arrived. Where did the liniment come from? The liniment was made by Bloom Seer Poplar. Her knowledge of his gifts and how they can be used to help us is nothing short of astounding. May I ask you about the tree minders? Please, go right ahead. How did the tree minders begin? I'm afraid I can take none of the credit for my husband's creation. I arrived perhaps a year after him, well after he established the tree minders. How did the tree minders normally handle other outsiders? Without his blessing, we would not allow an outsider inside this veil. Could I become a tree minder? Although we would welcome you with open arms, you were obviously drawn here to help us. What remains to be seen is what that help turns out to be. All right, I'll be going now. Goodbye, outsider. What to do, what to do. Well, now that we have other options, let's head back to Harold to see if there's anything we can do to convince him not to die. Look, Herbert. She's back. I told you. (laughs) What's with all the names? Bob, Herbert, Harold? I don't get it. Okay. Okay, let me talk. Real careful for the slow folks. I was once a man, a long time ago, named Harold. Something in me changed and a weird little tree started growing right out of my head. It kept getting bigger until I ended up stuck inside. When people would ask about it, I decided to name it Bob. You know, like a friend or something. Sometimes I call him Herbert instead of Bob because I get bored and I think it's funny. So, long story short, call me Harold. (laughs) All right, well, you're mostly a tree, right? Can't I just burn you down? Oh, no, 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 no. Fire would be too painful for me and poor old Bob. He keep that stuff away from us. The heart would be just fine, and I won't feel a thing. Well, he wants to die, but he certainly doesn't want to be burned to death. Can't say I blame him, though. Hey, about those tree minders. <laughs> no, don't get me started on them. I'm liable to talk about them all day. It even drives poor old Bob crazy. Did you ever ask one of them to kill you? <laughs> they won't listen to me at all. If I tell them something simple, then it gets done. Otherwise, Birch spends a week looking for a hidden meaning. 
Plus, <clears throat> he just pops in whenever he wants and starts chanting this nonsense. Sometimes I just sit there silently just to make him mad. That was fun for a while, but even that's getting boring now. Gosh, poor guy. Well, how do the tree miners normally handle other outsiders? Oh, <laughs> you wouldn't believe how they handle them. They make them drink this gunk that Poplar makes. Sometimes they just go nuts and start running around. And sometimes when they wake up and see me, they run for the hills. <laughs> I'll tell you. Outsiders are almost as entertaining as the tree minders. <laughs> Which tree miner do you get along with the best? Actually, the kid is the nicest one of all. Use her name. She sneaks in here sometimes and just lets me talk about stuff I want to talk about. <sighs> Bob really likes her, too, because she makes me happy. <laughs> oh, well, you'd think he'd at least want to stay alive for her sake. Killing her best friend would just break her heart. Hey, I have some quick questions about the caves. Yeah, I'll leave it to good old Bob to get me stuck above some caves. Now, my dang feet are cold. How do I get to the caves? I think the best way for you to get down there would be to get the key from the one those loonies call Cypress. There's supposed to be some old gate or something back in the other grove. Perfect, okay, we got the key. Is there anything down there I need to look out for? Sometimes I feel stuff tickling me. But I think that's just Bob getting back at me for all the times I call him Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Big things tickling his roots. Fine. You know, Harold, you don't actually seem that sad. Why do you want to die? I've been literally rooted to this spot. Thanks to Bob for maybe... 20 or 30 years, I can't even remember anymore. Can you imagine being stuck in one place for that long, not being able to eat or to read or to sleep or anything? In the meantime, I have these tree minders bothering me every day about things I don't even care about. And I can't stand it anymore. Okay, compelling argument. We have three ways to respond. We can say, if people thought I was a god, I'd exploit it for all it's worth. Hey, 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 I thought that too. At first, I had them sing me songs. I made them do stupid dances and things like that. Bob even told me to make Maple stand on his head for a whole day. <laughs> a whole day! <laughs> a whole dang day! <laughs> After a while, though, it just gets boring. Then it becomes a nuisance, and now it's completely driving me nuts! <laughs> well, at least he was entertained for a bit. 
Hey man, life is a gift. Even if it lasts a long time, be glad you have it. I've tried to stay happy. Really, I have. Bloomseer Poplar thinks I'll live for hundreds of years. Maybe even more. Can you imagine that? Stuck here for centuries? I can't do it. I just want to be alone. Just me and Bob until the end. When I saw you coming towards Oasis, I thought I felt that you'd understand me. I guess I was wrong. Or we can say, it's all right, Harold. I understand what you mean. I knew you would. That's why I picked you when I saw you coming. Wait, you say you saw me coming to the Oasis? And you called the tree miners crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you have a point there. Maybe I'm just losing my marbles from all this boredom. Or we can say, you saw me coming? That's not possible. I'm telling you, it is possible. Or maybe I'm just losing my mind from all this boredom. Seeing me approach from Oasis is quite a feat for a living tree stuck in one spot. Maybe I'm just losing my mind from all this boredom, but I swear if I try, I can see all around me. Like my eyes are in every leaf, on every tree. I think it's making Bob kinda jealous, cause he was the first tree in my life. And, uh, all that. Speaking of that, how is it you're causing all of these things to grow around you? It's kinda... embarrassing, really. Once a year, Bob decides he's gonna go ahead and, and start growing these weird pods filled with tiny seeds. Well, all it takes is a good wind and the seeds just fly everywhere. I call them Herbert Seeds. <laughs> he hates that. Funny, Harold. All right, I've got to go now. See you later. Well, maybe not if you do what I've asked. We're no closer to making our decision. Now we just have even more options. We can A, put Birch's sap on his heart to stop him growing with the hope that no one will ever find Oasis, and the tree miners can keep Harold's gift all to themselves. B, anoint the heart with Laurel's liniment to cause his seedlings to spread out farther, turning the entire wasteland into a lush oasis. Or we can kill Harold to end his suffering. Now, there is one way to kill Harold without mucking through those caves. You mentioned it, and then Harold mentioned it. If we try a shotgun, well, he's immune. We can try a minigun. Well, he's immune. Or we could try burning him. lets out a haunting, horrible wail. He writhes in agony for a while before finally dying. If we choose to kill Harold in this way, Three Dog talks about it on the radio. We've been getting reports of a raging, sustained fire somewhere up north. Yeah, yeah, so what? Well, here's what. Point one. The kid from Vault 101 was seen in that area just before the fire. Point two. The smoke and smell from this thing don't match your typical chemical burn. Reports are, this smells like burning wood. You heard it here first, children. A forest fire in the capital wasteland where all the trees were already burnt to a crisp 200 years ago. Only you 
you, 101. Only you. After the fire dies down, we can come back, and we find a burnt-out hall with mouth agape where Harold once stood. He died in agonizing pain, and this pain is forever on his face. If we choose to kill Harold in this way, all the tree miners turn hostile. Killing Harold like this is one of the most evil acts the Lone Wanderer could ever do. And I'm playing a good character, so I don't think I'm going to take that option. I can't imagine causing Harold all that pain. Instead, we need to delve into the caves below Oasis, reach his heart, and then make a decision. We'll make that decision and learn the ramifications of that decision in our next episode. I publish many Fallout videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs you can't find anywhere else. My shirts come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and a wide array of colors. You can find them on other items as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with the conclusion of the saga at Oasis.